I have the great pleasure now of being joined by Dr. Alan Dalkin, who is the chair of the Centennial ESAP project. So first talk to me a little bit about what the Centennial ESAP project is and, and maybe how it differs from ESAP 2016. We wound up taking a, taking a look at how we could uh, use the ESAP product, which is 120 questions, clinically derived questions in terms of trying to develop um, learning topics, issues that would be clinically relevant to learners and how to connect that to the centennial celebration that we have going on for the Endocrine Society. Yes, 100 years. <laughs> so in so doing, what we did is we developed 20 to 25 questions that link to past presidents. There's a whole slew of history uh, in terms of the people that have led the Endocrine Society over the years and how those people contributed, at least in terms of the clinical work, has been very important. So what we did is we developed a question and linked that to a past president and developed a both historical perspective and a clinical learning perspective for each of the questions. Historically, the ESAP has been such a great educational tool. Where can they find the questions for the centennial then? So at this point, what we've done is we've taken each of the questions or a question a month and it's linked to the website. You can find it under the clinical vignettes part of each of the month's activities. So there's a theme to January, February, March. The first question was released in January and that's a thyroid question. And there's a part of it that is involved with the clinical question and then the learning material. But embedded within that is also a part that allows you to link to the historical perspective of a president who worked in that field, who gave some contribution to the society in that regard. And, and it really does allow you to learn a little bit about their background and their personal history and what, what they felt was important to the Endocrine Society at those varying times. Okay, let's talk specifically about those questions and cases, then how are the questions constructed and who chooses them? <laughs> so there's a group of us, some 15 or 20 people that all volunteered for this. There's no, um, there's no official committee in that regard. And we've all developed questions in our fields that relate to previous presidents, trying to tie to the more clinically relevant things, as I said, uh, so that they can be used as learning tools. So we've not had any structure in terms of trying to decide which topics to cover per se, other than that each month has a theme in terms of a particular diagnosis and or particular area of interest and uh, that the presidents had their work. So it's, it's really been sort of a labor of love and it kind of everybody picks what they're interested in in talking about or writing about. Clearly based on passion for the subject when you think that this is all volunteer and just wanting that continuing education. And I, th I think it's, it's a way of um, combining both an educational opportunity with really something that pays a, a tribute to the Endocrine Society and to the people that spent hours and hours and hours and months of their time and years of their time trying to make it what it is today. Now traditionally we've seen things published. This is an online version right now. Any chance that ultimately it will be published? I mean our goal is eventually to have this put into print at some point. Perhaps it'll be next year. I think at this point the plans are that we'll release a, a question a month um, in the order based on the, the calendar, the endocrine calendar. And then probably we'll present most of these questions as a module, as a learning module at the CEU meeting in the fall in Seattle. And then hopefully by next year we can put it together as a, a publication similar to the ESAP, the self-assessment project that, uh, or that comes out each year. Tremendous idea and so helpful. Dr. Dawkins, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.